right, in this video we're going to wrap up section 2-3, uh, analyzing limits. And we'll start out here with something called the squeeze theorem. I think I've seen some books call it the sandwich theorem. Uh, the next theorem concerns the limit of a function that's squeezed between two other functions, each of which has the same limit at the given x value, as shown in the figure. And I think I got the figure on the next page. But our squeeze theorem here in the box says we have three functions, h of x, f of x, and g of x. And we know that h of x always gives the smallest, for any given c or any given input, h of x is always less than g of x, and our function f of x is always squeezed in between them. It's always sandwiched in between there. Uh, so if h of x is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to g of x for all x's in our open interval containing c, except possibly at point c itself, and if as x approaches c of both of these functions, h of x and g of x, they're both equal to the same limit. Then, if this occurs, then the limit of the f of x function exists, and it's also equal to that same value l. So here's what we got graphically. Uh, h of x is less than f of x, which is less than or equal to g of x. So g of x is always up on top. h of x is always the bottom. And f of x is always somewhere in between g and h. We know that at this point c, g of x and h of x come together. They pinch together and they have the same limit l. If f is always between h and g, it's also got to get pinched or squeezed in between those other two. And if g and h both come together at the limit l, and f is stuck in between there, it's got to be equal to them, then that f of x also has a limit equal to l. So you can see the usefulness of the squeeze theorem, also called the sandwich theorem or the pinching theorem, in the proof of theorem 1-9. So we have these uh, special trig limits, and that shouldn't be two. I did uh, this third one wasn't included until a later edition of the book. We have our three special uh, limits. Two of them are trigonometric, one's exponential. These will have to be memorized. You know, if you need to, you can always reprove them, you know, to yourself or on the AP test, but if you memorize them, it might save you a lot of work. The limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to one. The limit as we approach zero of one minus cos x all over x is equal to zero. And the limit as x approaches zero of this quantity, one plus x to the power one over x, is equal to e, our exponential. Again, you'll see how special this comes into uh, when we prove the squeeze theorem. So this is pretty neat here how they, uh, how somebody come up with this so long ago. And this little uh, proof here also incorporates, we're going to look at it uh, based on area. So if we come up here, we see the unit circle. Uh, circle, radius 1, uh, centered at the origin, we have our angle theta, and we know because this is the unit circle, this length here is going to be 1. So now we have uh, several things going on here. We have this bigger triangle that exists slightly outside the unit circle. We know the area of that triangle will be the biggest of the three. We have this sector, you know, with this arc here as part of it. We have the sector uh, inside the unit circle. That will ex exist in the middle. And if we slice the edge of that sector off and make this into a triangle that exists entirely within the unit circle, that will be the smallest of the three based on its area. And back to the unit circle. I wish oh, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, let's see, this point right here on the unit circle, of course, is going to be 1 comma 0. We know that this side of this triangle is 1. Uh, this point on the unit circle, remember uh, on the unit circle, every point is a sine and a cosine value, and the cosine is the x value. So this point is cos of theta comma sine of theta. Ooh, and I'll close off my parentheses there. Now, we didn't do this in pre-calc at all, but we're going to take ourselves outside of the unit circle to determine the coordinates of this point. Uh, we know this side is 1. We are looking for this side of the triangle, and this is our angle theta. So we have the adjacent side. We want the opposite side. What trig function is opposite over adjacent? A good old tangent. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And it's real nice here in the unit circle. This adjacent side is equal to 1. 
So the height of this point, we know our x value of course is 1, 1 comma, and the y coordinate of this point is tan theta. Alrighty, so I think we're all set up to start looking at uh, the area of those, oops, the area of those three shapes, the two triangles and the sector. Let's take a look at the biggest one first. I hope we remember from geometry, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the area of this triangle, the base is one. What was the height? Well, the height was up here, that was tan theta. So one half, one times tan theta, or half tan theta, or I'm gonna write it as tan theta over two half of the tangent of theta. That's the area of this triangle. Now in the middle, we're going to have the area of this sector. And the area of a sector is one half r squared theta. The radius is a nice even one, so one squared is one times a half is a half, and times theta, half theta. So the area of the sector is half theta or theta over two. And last but not least, we have the smallest of the three shapes based on area. We've sort of sliced the curve of the sector off, and now we just have this nice triangle. What is the height of that triangle going to be? Well, this point here would give us the height. That was also right here. And that is the sine coordinate. So area equals 1 half base times height. The base is 1 times a half is 1 half. And the height here again is sine theta sine theta. So the area of this triangle is half sine theta or sine theta over 2. And we know that this is the biggest, this is in the middle, and this one is the smallest. So tan of theta over 2 is greater than or equal to theta over 2, which is greater than or equal to sine of theta over 2. Now let's see, I can probably get rid of this get that out of the way. And we have this compound inequality set up. Let's work with that and see what we can come up with. Um, we're going to multiply through, we're going to multiply each of these terms by a common term. So here I'm going to switch back to blue and I'm going to just rewrite it. But I'm going to leave a little gap because we're going to multiply this by something. And then we're going to have our theta over 2 and we're going to multiply that by the exact same thing and then we have our sine of theta over 2 and we're going to multiply that by the same thing. Now we just got to be careful what we pick to multiply each term by to uh, make it have make a little sense at the end. And what we're just going to do is concentrate here we have our sine of theta over 2. I'm going to multiply this term by the flip of it. 2 over the sine theta. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over the sine of theta. And the first term also gets multiplied by 2 over the sine of theta. So let's see what happens here. Uh, the twos on the diagonal will cancel out. So our numerator is tan theta divided by sine theta. And remember back to pre-calc, tangent is sine over cos. Sine over cos, and we're dividing that by sine theta. So uh, we have a fraction divided by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, the reciprocal of sine theta is one over sine theta. So on this diagonal now, the sine of theta is cancel, and we're just left with 1 over the cos of theta. 1 over cos theta. And we have our inequality, greater than or equal to. These get a little easier now. The 2's here also cancel. So we're left with theta over sine theta. Greater than or equal to. The 2's cancel. The sine's cancel, so we're left with 1 times 1, or 1. And let me clean some of this up. Now, if you can reach real far back into pre-calc, there was a little rule that told us we have these inequality signs. If we invert each of these, if we flip them all over, it's sort of like dividing by a negative. We have to invert or switch around our inequalities. So this 1 over cos becomes cos over 1, or just cos. This greater than sign is now less than or equal to, and this becomes the sine of theta over theta. Uh, less than or equal to 1 over 1 inverted is 1. And if we go back to the very beginning of it, oh, uh, let me stop. And now we ask ourselves, what is the limit of this as x approaches 0? 
or uh, excuse me, as theta approaches zero. The limit as theta approaches zero. Plug a zero in for this theta. The cosine of zero is equal to one. Uh, less than or equal to sine of theta over theta. Because if we do direct substitution there, we will get uh, something divided by zero. We don't want that. And that's less than or equal to one. Now here's where the squeeze theorem comes into play. Uh, one is less than or equal to this quantity, which is less than or equal to one. You know, the less than idea doesn't make sense, but we do have the or equal to. If one is equal to one, and this exists somewhere in between them or right on top of them, it's also got to equal the same thing. So the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. And that's the same thing we saw in the theorem box, except theta they used an x instead. The limit as x approaches zero of sine of something divided by that exact same th something is equal to one. And let's see uh, here in example nine, we got some more trig stuff going on. So a limit involving a trig function. Uh, find the limit as x approaches zero of tan x over x. Our first order of business should be trying direct substitution. If we plug zero in, the tangent of zero, is, uh, tangent runs right through the origin, so the tan of zero is zero. If we plug in zero for x, we get zero over zero, and that is our indeterminate form. Gonna have to work a little bit more. So uh, a lot of what we did in pre-calc was manipulated and played around with these to make them take on different forms. The limit as x approaches zero. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is this denominator is an x. I'm going to drag that out and make it its own term, one over x, and then we're just going to have the tan of x by itself. And what's another way to write tan of x? Well, my favorite is sine x over cos x. Now, do any you know, we have this broken apart here and we rewrote tangent as sine over cosine. Does any of this look vaguely close to any of this? Well, sine x over x is the one we were looking at before. Do we have that here, sine x over x? Not exactly, but we're multiplying these two terms together. There's nothing to stop us from swapping the denominators of the two terms we have. So we have our one in a numerator, we have our sine in another numerator. Let's flip these denominators around. It doesn't matter what order we uh, multiply in, so we can do that. Aha, look at that. Now we have sine x over cos x. And you know, we proved that sine x divided by cosine x, the limit of that as we approach zero is equal to one. And in math, once you prove something, you can use it again without proving it again. So as x approaches zero, the limit of this term turns into a one. And we can try direct substitution here. So this is gonna be one over the cosine of zero. And the cosine of zero is one, so we have one over one times one, which is a nice, easy one. There's our limit. And I really like this last one here. Last example for the section, I do believe. Uh, another trig function. Make this just a little bit bigger. Come on. There we go. Uh, so we have our limit as x approaches zero of sine of four times x divided by x. First order of business, direct substitute. Plug that zero in, we get the sine of four times zero is zero. Divided by zero. So zero divided by zero, bad things. That's our indeterminate form. We're gonna have to try to play around with this a little bit. Now let me jump back here a couple slides. Uh, this is sine of x over x, or just to look at it in generic terms, the sine of something divided by that same something. As you look at that as a limit as we approach zero, whatever's in the parentheses, as long as they're the same, as we approach the x value of zero, this will have a limit of one. So, what we want to do here is to try to get this to be the sine of something divided by that same something. And let me write this here so I got a little room to work. The sine of 4x over 4. So, if this down here, oop, that's not a 4, that's an x. So, what we'd like to see is the sine of something over that same something.
well, we got a 4x with the sign and just an x by itself in the denominator. So that's not exactly as we need it. But we can multiply anything by 1 and not fundamentally change it. So I'm going to take what I have here, this given function, and I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a form of 1. You know, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so this is completely legal. So if I just concentrate on the denominator for now, the limit as x approaches 0, if I multiply here, I have the 4x I wanted. In math, are we allowed to take this 4 and put it inside these parentheses of what we are taking the sign of? No. But we can leave it out here, or even better, by the constant multiple rule, we can pull it out front. That 4 is going to jump out front and be a 4 times this limit as x approaches 0 of, now we have our sine of 4x over 4x, or our sine of something over that same something. And now we have that set up just like we need it, the sine of 4x over x, that limit as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. We have the theorem and we've already proved it. So we have our constant multiple out here, 4, 4 times, we know this limit is equal to 1, 4 times 1 is 4. There we go. Always try direct substitution first. If you get that indeterminate form, look to factor. Look to uh, multiply by a conjugate. Rationalize that numerator, or maybe even sometimes the denominator. Or look back to uh, some of our pre-calc stuff, working with the uh, trigonometric functions. And that's the end of 2.3. You should be able to do all the uh, homework problems on the assigned paper.